Hello there, friendly neighbors, and welcome back to our channel. All three of my babies are awake, besides besides Nova. You got 75% of my ferrets here, um, and they're being squirmy. So, okay, we're gonna go on the floor. Lyra, I'm sorry I have to do this to you. It's for the best. <laughs> Hello there everyone and welcome back to my series all about ferrets and kibble slash commercial foods. Today we're getting into the nitty gritty, the stuff I've been excited to start talking about and that is the ingredients list. I have decided to split the ingredients into two and if I'm being honest possibly three parts. And that's just because ingredients are kind of the thing that we're looking at most when it comes to kibble and I just don't want to rush over anything or skip over anything. So we're in this one for the long haul guys, okay? We're gonna spend some time together. Today we're starting off with the good stuff. We're gonna be talking about the ingredients you're gonna wanna make sure are in the commercial food that you are looking at. My ferrets are being loud in the background. I'm filming this video a little earlier than I normally film. They haven't gone to bed yet. They're still hyped up for breakfast. Look what Lyra likes to do. She loves trying to get up to the little shrine I made for Luna. I must bother big sister. Hello, can I come up? Lyra, that's not for you. But Big Sister is probably bored and needs me to play with her. Oh. I like to imagine Luna is looking down on her, just pissed off. In death as she is in life. Annoyed at her baby sister. Anyway, like I was saying, today we're going to be talking about the ingredients that you want to see included in your kibble, and I'm also just going to be talking a little bit about stuff that you can see on a bag of commercial food. I don't know, we might go on tangents, that's just how it is on my channel. We don't stay on a topic, we veer, okay? Let's veer a little bit today. Standard disclaimers for all the videos that I'm doing on commercial food. First off, I am not a vet, a scientist, or a nutritionist, I'm just someone who's very passionate about ferrets. I spend a lot of time doing research on them, and outside of YouTube, I work in the pet food industry, so I'm trying to use that knowledge that I have and apply it as much as I can to ferrets. Also, please make sure that you are taking a look at the other videos in this series, and you aren't gonna change what food you're feeding your ferrets solely based on one video. If you are trying to find a new brand of food to feed your ferret, make sure you're watching all of them. I cover very important, different bits of information in every single video that you don't wanna miss out on. So, before we can get into looking at what ingredients you wanna see on your commercial food, I just want to talk a little bit about pet food bags and the information that is presented on them because it can be a little misleading and complicated. The first thing that's important to talk about when it comes to commercial food is AFCO and the FEDIAF. You'll easily be able to find out if the food you're looking at follows the regulations set out by either of these two companies just by looking on the label. Somewhere on the bag there will have a little disclaimer or a little statement saying that it follows one of these two companies. If you're in North America it's going to be AFCO and if you're in Europe it's going to be FEDIAF. So what are these companies? AFCO and the FEDIAF were created to make sure that food sold on the market for pets is something that is actually going to be meeting basic nutritional requirements. Each of these two companies have basic requirements that their foods need to follow that they believe meet the minimum nutritional requirements for either cats or dogs. All right, I explained this next part poorly, so I want to do a voiceover and re-explain it so the words I'm saying actually make sense. I am only a human being and sometimes I make mistakes. This moment is highlighting one of those. So AFCO and the FEDIAF highlight the basic nutritional requirements for cats and dogs. The FEDIAF does have a section for rodents and other small animals, but they don't have anything on ferrets. So you might be sitting there thinking, okay, so why does this matter for ferret food? Well, the reason that I personally think it matters is because of the vitamins and minerals that we don't actually know what ferrets do and don't need. Like I've said time and time again in this series, we don't know the basic nutritional requirements for ferrets because it hasn't been studied. Based on what we have been feeding ferrets and the limited information that we do know based on the few studies that we've done, we can guess that ferrets need all of these things. It's a lot of things and a lot of it is uncertain and we don't know how much of each of them they need and we don't know how much is too much and it's just a big complicated mess of numbers but that's what we're at as far as nutritional information for ferrets goes. When it comes to AFCO and the FEDIAF, any cat food you're looking at legally needs to contain some amount of all of these things. 
So the reason that I think looking for an AFCO or FEDIAF certification is important is because it ensures that your ferrets are at least getting some of that stuff to some degree that AFCO or the FEDIAF has determined to be safe for cats. Like I've said before in this series, we guess that cats and ferrets follow relatively similar nutritional requirements, so because of that, I think that it is your best bet to trust a food that follows cat nutritional requirements, at least when it comes to the micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, all that stuff that we have even less information about than proteins and fats. And of course, by feeding a rotational diet of a couple different brands and types of commercial food, you're continuing to ensure that your ferrets have as much of the these nutrients as possible, hopefully as close to the amount that they need as possible, because rotational feeding gives them that variety and each different food helps fill the gaps that another food might have. I talk about this in the last video I did on this series. If you want more information, make sure you watch that one. Anyway, um, yes, hopefully I did that justice. Back to uh, video Kenya so you guys don't have to listen to my voice only. If a food is labeled as complete or balanced or something along those lines, that means it follows the regulations by these two companies. There are foods out there that are labeled as complementary or side dishes, toppers, those sort of things. What this means is that these foods aren't necessarily a complete and balanced meal and they should be used as a topper or a treat or an addition to a complete and balanced meal. Especially in regards to wet cat food, it's very important that you make sure the food you're looking at is a meal as opposed to something complementary that is supposed to be fed alongside the food. Through my work, I've really noticed a lot of the cat foods that come in the little like sealed packets. Those are generally speaking complementary as opposed to full meals. So just be careful. Keep in mind, just because a brand of food follows AFCO or the FEDIAF, that does not at all mean that it is a good food for ferrets or for cats and dogs. The minimum requirements that both of these companies have are really lax and there's a lot of ways to get around them or just to meet them but not be providing actual nutritional adequacy. Another important thing to keep in mind is that AFCO and the FEDIAF only apply to cat and dog food. If you are looking at a cat or a kitten food, make sure it's certified. If you are not looking at a cat or a kitten food and it is for ferrets, it won't be certified and that's okay but still follow the guidelines I'm putting out throughout this series. The next thing in regards to pet food bags is that I cannot stress this enough, it is so very important not to judge a book by its cover. I know it's really easy to see a bag of pet food that has like a wild cat on it or is very aesthetically pleasing and make the assumption that it is a good food. This is not the case, I promise. One of my favorite brands of cat food for both cats and ferrets looks like dollar store cat food because the bag is very colorful, there is a cartoonish picture of a cat on it, and it just kind of looks low quality and not super impressive. But it is a super good food, especially their wet food line, I think is muy magnifique for ferrets. On the other hand, there is this very popular brand of cat food I know that has an extremely aesthetic looking bag. It looks like it is super quality, beautifully designed, and it's garbage. You look at the ingredients and the first ingredient is corn and you say to yourself, what the f dude? The last thing I wanna mention about pet food bags is the difference between pet food bags that say percent protein from animal sources and percent ingredients from animal sources. There are quite a few brands of cat food that will have a big 80% animal on the front of the bag. And it's really important for you to look at that bag and read the fine print. This 80% will say one of two things. It will say percent protein from animal sources or percent ingredients from animal sources. And these both mean very different things. Side note, this might be something that's common sense and for some reason my brain just didn't put it together until like last week. I don't know. Maybe everyone already knows this, in which case I'm just outing myself for the sometimes not so smart person that I is. So a bag labeled 80% protein from animal sources means that 80% of whatever the protein is on the guaranteed analysis is animal protein. So if you look on the guaranteed analysis and you see a food that is 40% protein, 80% of 40% is only 32%. So you know that that means that this bag of food is 32% animal protein and 8% plant protein. As we've discussed in this series before, plant protein isn't something that ferrets' bodies can make use of because they are 
able to get carnivores. So because of that, this bag only contains 32% crude protein that ferrets can actually digest. Like I said last video, you should be aiming for about 35 to 40% crude protein and then adjusting according to what you see in your ferret. So this bag of food you looked up that you thought contained a lot of animal protein actually doesn't meet the requirements that you should be looking at for animal protein for ferrets. On the other side of things, if you find a bag of food that says 80% of ingredients from animal sources, that means that 80% of the actual ingredients are actually from animals. If you look on the ingredients list and you're seeing a lot of animal and not very much carbs that are high in plant protein, a lot of that crude protein on the guaranteed analysis is going to be made up of animal protein, which is what we want. Less plant protein, more animal protein. Now that we're done with that, let's actually get talking about the ingredients. When you look at the ingredients on a bag of pet food, it is listed from the ingredient that weighs the most to the ingredient that weighs the least before cooking. So the first couple ingredients are going to be making up the majority of the bag, and the further down you go, you're gonna be getting to your carbs and fillers, and then eventually you're gonna be getting to your vitamins, minerals, and other necessary additives. Like we talked about last video, cooking meat does deplete the nutrients in it, so because of that, these nutrients need to be added back in artificially in order to get it to meet the standards that these pet foods need to meet. Unfortunately, pet food bags don't actually need to tell you what percent each ingredient makes up in the bag, which is frustrating, and I really do wish that was the standard. There are some brands that do list this and I really like that because it just makes it easier for you to analyze if this food is or isn't appropriate. If I'm being honest, I think that when you're looking at the ingredients list of a commercial food, you should sit there and Google every single ingredient that you see. Especially in regards to the added supplements, there's a lot of them that you're not gonna know what they are. I don't even know what most of them are when I'm looking at food. So when you're Googling them, you're gonna be able to get a better understanding of what they are and what they're adding to the food, which is gonna help you make a decision on if you wanna be feeding this to your ferrets or not. I will have a link below that has a big list of a lot of the common additives in cat food Food, especially in wet cat food, and you might be able to use that as a reference. So what ingredients should we be looking for on this list? The number one ingredient and the most important thing when it comes to looking at commercial foods for ferrets is that the first thing listed should be an animal protein. So this means something like chicken, turkey, beef, duck. They also might have variations like fresh chicken meat, chicken breast, beef and beef bone, whole chicken, all of these are great and the things that you should be looking for. What you don't want to see as the first ingredient is an animal followed by meal or byproduct. And absolutely no veggies, fillers, or carbs first. If you see that, put the bag down and walk away. I'm going to be talking a lot more about meal and byproduct in my next video on ingredients to avoid, but essentially in the case of meals, these are very heavily processed and are not nearly as nutritious, and on the case of byproduct, it's a big question mark on what that actually is, which in my opinion is a little bit sketchy and you want to be cautious of. I got two opinions on this matter. First opinion is I really don't think it's bad if meal and byproduct is somewhere on the ingredients list, you just don't want it to be the first one. My second opinion is also something I'm doing a voiceover for. Bold of you to assume that I wouldn't mess up twice in one video. My second opinion conflicts with the opinion I know a lot of people have in regards to the first few ingredients. Lots of people have the opinion that there shouldn't be any meals, byproducts, or fillers within the first three to five ingredients. Personally, I think it really depends on both the type of food and the individual food itself. In regards to wet, freeze-dried, and air-dried food, I definitely agree that meals, byproducts, and fillers should not be within the first three to five ingredients. In all of those foods, it's really easy to avoid those types of ingredients because of the way these foods are cooked and processed. On the other hand, like I discussed in my first video on this series, Kibble requires those things, both to make the food form into the shape that kibble needs to be in, and to keep costs low. Because of that, I think that kibbles that have the first ingredient as an animal protein and then go into meals and byproducts right after are fine. There are lots of cat and kitten foods that are limited ingredient foods geared towards animals with allergies or sensitivities that can only handle a certain type of animal protein. In those types of foods, the first ingredient is going to make up a very large portion of the ingredients. What I'm trying to say here is that I think it's important to continue to analyze foods that break the one to three ingredients rule that a lot of people put out because these foods still might be acceptable. 
especially if you're practicing rotational feeding, which I think you should be. So you know what? Let's change that rule that I just put out. Okay, that's better. Besides animal protein being the number one or two or three or four or five thing that is on the bag, there are other things that I really like to see listed on the ingredients list and I think you guys should be mindful of and be looking out for. The first thing is organ meats and heart. A food that has organ meats and heart added to it means that your ferret is gonna be getting a lot of the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients they need from a more bioavailable and natural source. When you're feeding your ferrets a raw diet, a lot of the vitamins they get come from these parts of the animal, and the same follows for commercial foods. Of course, as we've mentioned before, cooking meats depletes nutrients, so some of them are still gonna need to be added back, but it just means that there are ones they're getting from a more natural source, and I just, I just like to see that. Lots of the wet foods that I really like contain organ and heart, and I just, makes me happy. Next, we have bone. From what I've seen, lots of air-dried and freeze-dried foods contain bone, and I think that's great because just like organ meats are a natural source of vitamins and minerals, bone is a really great natural source of calcium. Calcium goes very hand-in-hand -hand with phosphorus. When you're looking at a food, if you see these listed on the guaranteed analysis, you should be looking for foods that have a pretty close one-to-one -one ratio of both of these things. They're needed for proper bone and joint health in pretty much all living things, including ferrets. Though a one-to-one -one ratio is preferred according to biology and diseases of ferrets, ferrets eating anywhere from a one-to-one -to, -one to a two-to-one -one ratio of calcium to phosphorus didn't really show any signs of poor effect, but it's still best to try and get it close to that one-to-one -one ratio. Anyway, how does this relate to bone? Animal meat is very high in phosphorus and bone is quite high in calcium. So when you see bone added to a food, you know that they're getting calcium to counter the high amount of phosphorus in the meat, which is gonna help with that one-to-one -one ratio becoming more balanced. If you don't see bone added into the food, you'll see it in the micronutrients and the stuff at the end of the ingredients list. And again, this just goes sort of hand in hand with the idea of Googling things on the ingredients list because some stuff is named weird things and you're not gonna know that that's got calcium added to it unless you Google it. The next thing that I like to see in foods is egg. Egg just contains a lot of vitamins and minerals and because it's an animal source, that means that it's very bioavailable for ferrets and I really like to see it. Poultry or animal fat is another one that is kind of nice to see. Just like eggs, it is high in omega-6 and omega-3. And as we talked about in previous videos, fat is so, so important for ferrets as they get most of their energy from fats. Just like with plant protein, ferrets can't very easily digest plant fats. So when you see a food that uses something like chicken or poultry fat, as opposed to sunflower or pumpkin seed oil, you know that the fat in their food is more bioavailable and they're gonna have an easier time digesting it and actually using it. So that's really all that I have to say about the ingredients you're gonna be wanting to look for and a little bit about how to analyze a bag of food that you're looking for for your ferrets. It's complicated and there are a lot of unknowns, but that's kind of a common theme throughout this entire series because we don't know that much about ferrets. Next week, I'm going to be talking about the ingredients that you should be avoiding in commercial foods and I have a lot more to say about that, so it very well might be split into two parts because I just don't have enough time in my week to edit a 45 minute video, so sometimes a 45 minute video needs to become two 20 minute, no, 20, 22 minute and 30 seconds videos. I did math.